Our call to worship comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, without Him nothing was made that has already been created. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to testify about the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own people did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the resurrection. Thank you, Father God, for what you've sacrificed. Thank you for saving us, Lord Jesus. It is so undeserved. This morning we come with grateful hearts, Lord Jesus, to your throne of grace and mercy. And we come and say, thank you, Lord. So undeserved. And we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the ultimate sacrifice that you've made. I pray this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. The Resurrection After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to go look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, he rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The gods were so afraid of them that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of our risen Lord and Saviour. Good morning Ebenezer family and to everyone else who will be watching this broadcast. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch this Easter Sunday service with, with us. Thank you very much to Keenan Rogers who did our call to worship, Neil Fasahi who led us in prayer, and to Sarah Allen Groenewald who did our scripture reading. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, my Lord and my Saviour. Amen. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, on this Sunday, almost 2,000 years ago, they walk towards the grave of Jesus. And they do this with heavy hearts, somber, feeling the sadness of having lost a friend. It must have been a very difficult walk for them. The Bible says that they walked while it was still dark. 
It was dark outside, but it was even darker within their hearts. And now they walk towards the grave of Jesus. I've seen it many times before. When loved ones of a recently deceased go back to the gravesite just days after the funeral, you can be standing a hundred meters away, but you sense the pain and the sorrow that the family is still going through. And this is exactly what Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, experienced as they walked towards Christ. This was such a different walk than the other times when they would walk to the places or the spaces where Jesus was. Then they would walk with anticipation, with excitement, knowing that the rabbi would teach them something new, that the master would give them something to feed from, that they would be able to take home with them. Now, this morning, they walk towards the grave of Jesus, towards the lifeless body of Christ, the master, the teacher, the healer is no more. It must have been a very difficult walk for them. Now, their somber state is shaken as an angel of the Lord appears like lightning with clothes whiter than snow. Both the Marys are terrified. The angel says to them, do not be afraid. You have come to seek Jesus who had been crucified, but he is no longer here. He has risen from the dead. Come, come and see for yourself the empty grave. Now go back to the disciples and go and tell them what you have seen. Can you imagine that walk back? unable to contain themselves, filled with excitement, filled with hope. It is that walk, that purposeful walk away from the grave that is our focus for this morning. I am convinced that Christ desires for all of us to walk through our lives with that purposeful stride, that sense of direction that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, had as they walked away from the grave. I am convinced that God does not desire for us to drag our feet through our lives as we are weighed down under the weight of our lives, as the pain and the suffering that we sometimes experience as this slows down our steps, as we are sometimes constrained by the restrictions that other people place upon us or that we sometimes place upon ourselves. This slows down our step. The challenges that life sometimes bring on our path, this sometimes grinds us almost to a halt as we struggle to put one foot ahead of the other. This is not what God wants. No, no, no. Christ desires for each of us to walk purposefully with a sense of hope, with the excitement that the two Marys felt as they walked away from, from the grave that day. When I think in my mind how Jesus walked, as he walked in Galilee, as he walked in Jerusalem, as he walked all over as he took his ministry, I see Jesus walking purposefully. I see him walking with a stride of confidence. I don't see Jesus dragging his feet and saying, oh, do I need to go there again? No, I see Jesus walking with that stride. On Good Friday morning, Reverend Samuel Britz reminded us that when Jesus walked to Jerusalem, after he had raised Lazarus from the dead, he walked ahead of the crowd purposefully with direction driven by passion. And it is this that God desires for all of us as we walk away from the grave. The disciples get the news and they run towards the gravesite to go and see 
for themselves. And I see the disciples looking into that empty grave and saying to themselves, what kind of man is this that he can raise himself from the dead? Remember, they asked that same question when they were on the Sea of Galilee amidst that storm that Jesus calmed. They said, what kind of man is this that he could calm the storm that he has command over nature? And I imagine they ask that question many times. What kind of man is this that he can raise a man from the dead days after his death? What kind of man is this that he can feed a multitude with scraps of food? What kind of man is this? What kind of man is this brother and sister that today calls you and me to walk away from the empty grave? with a stride of confidence, with a stride of hope, with a stride filled with purpose. Our God, our Christ, overcame death. There is nothing in your life that should weigh you down, that should slow down your step. There is nothing that should take away your stride. Our God has overcome death and he will give you victory over whatever it is in your life that you struggle with. Wherever you are this morning, whatever weighs on your mind, whatever is burdening your heart, walk away from the empty grave with purpose. Walk away inspired, uplifted and driven by the fact that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead and he rose to give you and me victory over it everything. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Let us receive the blessing. May the grace of the Father, the love of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you and abide with you now and forever. Amen.